Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Heads, people, pop culture. Let's bring on the host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. I'm the queen of rock and roll dogs. Now you can hear me. I am Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and you are listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. It's a rock and roll show all about pets, people, and pop culture. And I am live from Las Vegas. Now today I'm talking about sharing Thanksgiving with your pets, uh, traveling with your pets during this holiday season, and saying no to palm oil. So stay right there. Rock Dog Radio, Pets, People, Pop Culture. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. How is everyone doing today? It's the weekend. Can you believe it? We're just a few days away from Thanksgiving. Can you believe it, Jim? I can't believe it. Oh my gosh, that was loud. (laughs) Well, you made winter come today by turning the heat on for the first time. November 19th, 2016, our heat went on for the first time. I I held off, but this morning... You could have held off, I think, another four or five days. The studio was just a little too chilly for me this morning. And uh, my co-host, Jim is one of them, but my other three co-hosts, even though they have fur, one in particular feels the cold and that's my jack russell thornton so she likes to be wrapped up she is right now in the studio wrapped up in a blanket as cute as anything mr twix has an amazing coat to keep him warm and he actually likes to be outside in the cold and galaxy likes the cooler weather because she doesn't like summer too much so um two out of three love it one yeah if i keep her wrapped up she's happy (laughs) and myself uh if you're listening in for the first time welcome to the show got a very um uh full show today lots to talk about but thanksgiving is going to be a topic so um do you realize this gem i've never cooked a thanksgiving dinner in all the time that i've lived here that's because you're british yeah yeah. You don't understand nor appreciate No, I do the understand and I do appreciate you don't thank rec- you. you don't recognize you don't recognize it, it. Right. <laughs> who used to say that oh honey honey Boo Boo used to say that, isn't that right? Yeah, I don't, think you don't I don't recognize know. it. Um, yeah, twenty. But now that you're an American, twenty-two years, you appreciate it. I, I, yeah, I'm. I, I'm th- actually, this will be my th- first Thanksgiving as a dual citizen. Don't say that on the air. Why? You, you can only be a citizen of one country as an American. Nope, that's wrong. That's why they gave me dual citizen status. Nobody gave you that. I'm allowed it. You just don't. You didn't give up your other one. Yeah, exactly. But I still feel I'm very British. Anyway, on to Thanksgiving. I say that I've never cooked a Thanksgiving dinner. I can cook, don't get me wrong. But I've never cooked a Thanksgiving dinner because we always have incredible friends who invite us along. And uh, remember that one year, didn't we do three Thanksgiving dinners and popped around from one house to the next? and Visitation oh, marathon. Oh, never again, I tell you, never again. We ate far too much food. And we felt bad leaving to go to someone else's house, even though everybody knew that. They're like, oh, just pop in. Oh, pop in and eat more food. So um, we may actually just go um, on a day trip, in all honesty, with the dogs. So uh, we we have had some invitations. And if we do decide to stay in town, then that's what we'll do. But again, I won't be cooking. Maybe I'm just really smart, Jim. Maybe. <laughs> well, listen, if you... Uh, but you get all ramped up for Christmas time cooking. Oh, I'm full on. I'm full on already. I am really excited about Christmas. And I've put together a group, a secret group called Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. It's not secret now. But it's really for people who really enjoy Christmas, who get into the spirit very early. Who make their husbands decorate the inside and the outside of the house. I, that's right. The front garden, the back garden. I mean, everything. Um, but really, just, you know, there's always someone that says, you know, I hate Christmas and, you know, Sometimes I just don't want to hear it. So I thought I'd put together a nice little group of people that really enjoy the season. And they've been sharing their recipes, their uh, traditions, uh, anything that's going on in the sales, showing uh, pictures of of, uh, some of my friends have already started decorating. But it's just a really nice, nice group of people. So. Uh, so there you go. That's Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. And actually, someone just posted something really funny. It's a drinking game when you're staying in one night for Christmas and you put a, a Santa hat on the corner of your TV, yeah? And they say every time someone on the screen happens to walk and look like they're wearing the hat, you have to take a drink. 
Do you know what? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's weird. It's not. It's hilarious. I, I wouldn't be paying. I would be watching the movie, not waiting for an opportunity. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the difference between you and me. I would be waiting for that, and the fact that you don't drink, so I can't imagine how fun that would be. <laughs> yeah, I'd be a riot. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'd like to connect with us um, uh, throughout the in- internet, internet, interwebs, what the, people have had some funny names for it over the years. Uh, you can find us quite easily by going to our website, first of all, which is VegasRockDogRadio.com. It's the hub of the show. And that's where you can listen to the show live. You can also listen to our archive shows as well. And you can listen to our uh, pet tip of the day and uh, get a little morsel of information uh, just by clicking and listening. It's really, really simple. Uh, you can also find us uh, periodically on Periscope. And, uh, of course, we're on Facebook and we're on Twitter and Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr. Goodness gracious, is there anywhere else I could be? Uh, we're also, uh, we also have um, a website for our uh, clothing line for pets and uh, rock and roll humans, and that's VegasRockDog.com which is seeing a lot more traffic, of course, because we're coming up to the holidays and people are shopping for themselves and their pets and uh, and their pet-loving family members and friends. Um, also, we have a blog, and that's the com. and I'm going to be showcasing on December 1st uh, my uh, holiday gift guide and the, and the things that I've found that I think pet lovers will really love for themselves and for their pets. So that's coming up soon. Oh, it's been, it, you know what, it's a lot of work. It's been very busy this season. Very, very busy. Now, if you um, if you love to listen to podcasts on your radio, that kind, that kind of thing, of course you can listen to the show live through, through your phone quite easily by going to the website, click the Listen Live link. But if you like to listen at, at your own leisure, then of course you can find us on iTunes and you can find us on iHeartRadio. Now, we are on a ton of other podcast catching apps and you will most likely find us on those also. So... Um, so yeah, plenty of places to find us. Just search Vegas Rock Dog Radio. I'll search me, Sam, the Queen of Rock and Roll Dogs. And I had this. Um, uh, actually, both you and I had this moniker given to us way before we started the radio show. You remember uh, Barbara used to call us the uh, Rock and Roll King and Queen. She did. She did. She stuck. She. It's, it's thanks to her. It's stuck, and it's been with us for ever, almost ten years. So, uh, yeah, that's something that's kind of stuck with us, but there you go. Um, w- you have a gig today, yeah? Yeah, I'm busy tonight, 6 o'clock at night. I've got a uh, a jazz gig over at a residence, I believe. I didn't know it was a jazz gig. Jazzy jazz. Ooh, there tra-la-la. <laughs> so um, I'm probably just going to work because um, I have a lot to do. I mean, a lot to do before the end of the year when it comes to the radio show, of course, putting out a gift guide. And uh, all the charitable work that we're doing with Rocking for Rescues. I did a, a little, put together a little flyer yesterday. Really, it was more for my own benefit to keep track of everything that we're doing when it comes to uh, charitable events. And it's a lot. It really, really is a lot. But it's all related to Rocking for Rescues, of which I am a board member. And we've got everything from a Yankee Candle um, online fundraiser where they donate back 40% to actual physical events. Um, One of them is the Will Edwards Show Day. Will Edwards is a good friend of mine uh, with the only late night talk show in Las Vegas. He also has uh, We Funny, which is a a comedy series that he does downtown. And he just started a new one and it's called... We More Funny? No. (laughs) It's called... I think it's called War of Laughs, as in Tug of War? Tug of Laughs? Oh my gosh, now I don't know what it's called, but it's brand, brand new. And of course, it's uh, it's comedians battling. So he's a very busy person, and um, he had a proclamation given to him by the mayor of Las Vegas, and it's the Will Edwards Show Day, and it's a day of charity and giving back. So he is uh, holding his event on December the 1st, which is less than two weeks away now, at Rebar. Rebar is downtown Vegas, and it's, it's so cool, this bar. You haven't been yet, Jim. But everything in that bar is for sale. Every decoration in there, every piece of furniture, bar stool, you name it. And it's it's like a bar inside uh, an antique place. Not antiques, but actually probably a lot of retro stuff. You, you're going to love it when you go in there. When are we going? Oh, whenever you want. I mean, you, you're going to say, I know what you're going to do. You're going to go, I had that when I was a kid. 
I remember how I got that for Christmas when I was a kid because it's that fabulous. That you story. bought cereal that I used to have when I was a kid. Oh, is is that? I know you'd mentioned it, and I figured that might be. It. Are you happy about that? I ate two bowls. <laughs> Do you want to tell everybody what that was? Frankenberry. <laughs> Surely it's, it's just full of it's just full of chemicals it was and sugar. My I'm sure. So I, I didn't know it was, it was my favorite of the three berries. Well, I, I know you Frankenberry, blueberry, and Count Chocula. Well, they did have blueberry. They did have that, but I thought, oh, I think this is the one. So I'm Frankenberry glad. was the most popular. I'm glad me. you like that, Jim. Thank I didn't you. buy it from Rebar though. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't a vintage box of cereal. Um, so that is December 1st, 7 to 10 p.m. And, uh, of course, Rocking for Rescues, we're putting together a fantastic raffle to raise money. Uh, we're going to have our purple carpet there. We don't do red carpets. We do a purple carpet. And we've got a photographer, so you'll be able to get great photographs. Come in. We've got some special cocktails. Um, they do food. They also do – They actually, you know what they do mainly is hot dogs, but they also do vegan hot dog, which was – I tried it. It was amazing. You would not know the difference. Pam and I were saying – Dude, this can't be. This must be just a normal hot dog. It was really good. So uh, that's going to be really, really fun. And um, we tried to get that in early because of there's going to be so many events to go to. I'm sure we're going to miss out on some of them. So, so yeah, like I said, we have a lot going on as far as charitable work. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and a, a sixth one that I'm just working on right now before the end of the year. So we're going we're gonna to need a break. Have you heard that saying, I'll sleep when I'm dead? <laughs> I think that's kind of what we're going to do. So, Jim. Yes. Did you hear about the news of the wild animals in Pahrump? I saw a news story yesterday about the camels. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that, too. That's on my list. That's, that's the only thing that I've seen on the news this week. Uh, you know, uh, Vegas is not... Um, they're not, I would say, not impressive when it comes to animal welfare and issues. Uh, we are an entertainment town. So, therefore, people use animals in entertainment. And uh, we did. We thought we'd seen the last of the Tiger Show going, uh, which it did go. And and there was some abuse um, consider, uh, you know, claims with, with that as well. Plus, it's so old. Why are we doing this? Well, you know what they say in the magic world. If you've got a bad magic act, add animals. Well, there you go, because they'll upstage you every time, because animals are wonderful, but it's uh, it's not the way to use them for profit and uh, for entertainment. So, you know, we're, we're fighting a lot of these issues here in town, and if it's not dolphins in tiny swimming pools, it's, uh, you know, it was tigers. And now, uh, I'm just watching the news yesterday, and uh, everybody's excited about camels, camel rides, and yeah, I know we're in the desert. But well, didn't the didn't the guy say all oh, camels originated in North America? Well, I think it, they originated from the from Canada, uh, uh, Antarctica. I think, I, I think I'm correct. And they went down both land bridges. Then yeah, exactly. So, but that's not a reason to exploit animals for money and entertainment. It's just not a reason. Because it's the region. I don't care what the region is. And, of course, and I never like this. I cannot stand when um, uh, it's called Camel Safari. But I, I have a really big problem with any organization that misuses the word sanctuary. I have a big problem with that because it's, a, it's one way to fool people. And another way to fool people is to say there's they have conservation efforts going on. And another one is to say it's educational. It always seems to be the facade, and, and that's what sucks people in. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, they use all the words yeah. that in regular polite society means that their welfare is being taken care of, and they use it as an opportunity to uh, and not, but not many people exploit. Yeah, not many people dig deep. You know, I'll go further and say, are they really a sanctuary? Um, because, you know, a real sanctuary, there's one in Tennessee, it's the Elephant Sanctuary. That's the name of the website, Elephant Sanctuary. Um, how many acres, Jim? Do you want to find out for me how many Hun acres? Hundreds. Oh, I mean, it is a true Hundreds. sanctuary. They retire the elephants from the circus, and they get to live out their life without a single person riding them, no photographs, no photographs. No day with an elephant feeding it, N not, no elephants painting for you, nothing like that. You cannot buy a ticket. You cannot buy a ticket. 
I think they do occasional fundraisers in their facility, but it doesn't involve riding elephants or anything like that. And that, to me, that is a true, true sanctuary. They get to live out their life. They don't have to see another camera. 2,700 acres. Isn't that phenomenal? And they have the um, Indian and the African elephant separated because I think that's what you have to do. You could tell the difference by their ears. We learned that in school. Oh, that's up. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you would tell us the difference then, Jim. One has big ears, one has small ears. <laughs> Which ones? I couldn't tell uh. you that. I just know that that's a different, that's one or the other. <laughs> so to, to me and to thousands of other people who love animals, they know uh, that that would be a true sanctuary. So to make money off them, to breed them and say you're conserving, uh, to, to uh, have these school trips, to have the birthday party that party there, uh, this is not um, a true sanctuary. And uh, I I do have a big problem with that. So let let's see where we go with that. Now the other the other story in the news here with us is in Pahrump. Pahrump is over the hump. It's in a different county. It's in my county, and a lady, um, what well neighbors? <laughs> I think this was the story. Neighbors looked over a very short wall separating them. I think it's a four foot wall. Even I could climb over a four foot wall, and the lady's got uh, got tigers. And I think she's got some other, I think there was a panther, uh, there was some other other animals too. Now, one, it, I, it didn't look that big to me. It was a residence. It was a residence. They said they were not living in good condition, uh, in good conditions. And, you know, these are the kind of animals, they need to be able to climb, they need to be able to run, they need to, to be, and you can't be in that, those confined spaces. Although she did have a permit, to have them as pets, exotic pets. I guess so. There's um, some I'd weird laws on the books that I don't quite understand. Yeah, in where you you can have those. I exotics. think she originally came from Texas, if I'm not wrong. See, here's another thing too. What what if you move and, and what if what if you did have a an okay facility, yeah, enough space, say, and say you then move. I mean, do you really notify? Does that license cross, is that a national license? Is that a state license? Is that, you know? States control that. They do yeah. entirely. There's so no how, d so, so who went out to inspect the facility? Nobody did. Well, until, until some neighbors said, hang on a minute here, we've, we've got kids. For example, in Nevada, the state controls wildlife and the municipalities control pets. Mm. That's the separation in, in the governing bodies because well there's the nevada department of wildlife but what do you, what do you consider uh, exotic animals that are not native to nevada does the state control those or not that's a good question we'll have to contact the state and find out yeah um but clearly in this situation well they were removed now here's the thing i think they ended up at the lion here's another word habitat yeah, that we've got here. They have got an educational component. They work in conservation. They have feed a giraffe for, di for a day. They have spent a day on with... On the concrete patio. On the concrete, yeah. So here we go. So, uh, I don't know. I'm going, I'm going to follow up more on this one because, uh, you know, you, when you're trying to make some headway and then you see the camels pop up and you see this crazy woman that pops up, you know, that doesn't have them in... in, in uh, in conditions that are for good for their health and well-being, and then another place who says it's habitat gets the, gets the tigers. And I'm sh absolutely sure that's what happened because when I read the gentleman's name, uh, I know he's connected with them. So <sighs> it's exhausting at times, you know. But we've just got to keep plowing along, haven't we, Jim? Yep, one person at a time. Yeah, that's right. One person at a time, one issue at a time, one animal at a time, and that way you don't get too overwhelmed by it. So, Jim, since we're plowing on, let's plow on into some commercials. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> we'll be right back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. At Carl's Jr., not only do we make you happy with our delicious charbroiled burgers, but we also make your dogs happy. When you come through our drive-thru with your furry friend, we'll offer your dog a treat. 
If not, always ask for one. We love to see their smiling faces. Our website, CarlsJuniorOfLasVegas.com, has a treat for its customers, too, with free coupons anytime, so be sure to visit us regularly. Carl's Jr. is a proud and active supporter of dog adoption in our community. You can find us at Carl's Jr. of Las Vegas or on Twitter at Carl's Jr. of Vegas. Welcome to Barking Dogs Self-Wash and Grooming, your one-stop shop for all of your pet's needs. We offer premium natural pet foods, full-service grooming, and an on-site bakery and boutique. You can choose to self-wash your dog or schedule a luxury pampering with our professional groomers. Our new Cool Cat section offers feline food, toys, bedding, and litter, while the adventurous dog department has everything you need for your outdoor activities. Cody's Healing Garden is a special place featuring flower, aromatherapy, and herbal remedies for pets. Ask us about Karma Connection, our program supporting animal rescue. Find us at BarkingDogsLV.com and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. We look forward to seeing you at Barking Dogs Self-Wash and Grooming. Let's bring on the host, Sam. The queen of rock and roll dogs. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, Jim, that was a bit, ooh, a bit adru- abrupt. <laughs> what? I, I, my fingers are still getting used to which button to push so that you have don't have extra reverb. <laughs> sometimes reverb's good. Sometimes it's not. So, so uh, we talked about wild animals in Perump, camels in Vegas. Ugh, come on, people. And now we're going to talk about orangutan, orangutans. I would be friends with an orangutan. You would. Or a silverback or a gorilla. Silver. They're big, aren't they big? They Very sh- kind, human-like animals. However, my firm stance is wildlife and domestic life do not need to mix. I don't agree. Cause sometimes you get those rare occasions where they make friends. No, I, I'm, we're going to have to disagree. That's uh, fine, Jim. I'd love to. I'd love to agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. <laughs> so we'll just leave you as wrong at this point. <laughs> Orangutan rescue. So let me tell you why we're talking about this. Um, I was on the International Animal Rescues uh, website, and that is internationalanimalrescue dot org o r g, and I pulled this off their website, and it's something I've wanted to talk about for a while, um, but never had the. The, the the time on the show to do it because there were so many other issues to cover. So finally I've got down the list and I've got to this one. So here we go. The plight of the orangutan in Indonesia has reached a critical stage and with the survival of the species under serious th- uh, with the survival of the species under serious threat. Animals are suffering and dying because of the systematic destruction of the rainforest, primarily for palm oil production, and particularly in Kalimantan the Indonesian part of the island of Borneo. And uh, this is what this company does. This is what the organization does. The International Animal Rescues Team is working in West Kalimantan to rescue and care for baby orangutans that have been taken from their mothers to be illegally sold as pets and adults that have spent their entire lives in captivity, chained up or imprisoned in tiny cages. A human orangutan conflict team also comes to the aid of orangutans left stranded when their forest home is destroyed and translocates these vulnerable animals to safe areas of protected forest. Any animals that can no longer survive in the wild will be given a permanent home at the center. The project is an ambitious one, but we are committed to rescuing and rehabilitating as many orangutans as we can and giving them a second chance to live safely in their natural environment. Natural environment is so important because you're, you, you animals have this natural instinct. You know, so it doesn't matter where you put them, they have a need to live in their natural environment so they can thrive and be themselves. Um, now, this is about their center. They said, during the first years of our orangutan uh, rescue project, our team worked from a small site in Ketapang, West Kalimantan, and the facility has formed, uh, formerly served as a transit center for orangutans being relocated to other parts of Kalimantan. Until International Animal Rescue became involved, there was no proper rehabilitation center for rescued orangutans in West Kalimantan. And the, f- the priority was to set up a temporary facility where they could be given immediate care and emergency veterinary treatment. 
Now, the longer term goal was to establish a more permanent facility. And they said thank you to generous funding from their supporters. They were able to start building the new center in February in 2012. And it caters for up to 100 orangutans at a time. It's a lot. And facilities include um, large quarantine pens for new arrivals, a fully equipped veterinary clinic, a public education center, indoor accommodation for adults and babies and spacious outdoor forested enclosures where the orangutans can develop the skills of natural behavior they will need to fend for themselves in the wild. And the first babies and infants were moved into the new rescue center in uh, January of 2013 with the rest following shortly afterwards. And they said in the summer of 2013, the first four adult females were also moved into the quarantine quarters at the new center while construction continued on enclosures to accommodate more of the adults. So now they fast forward on to 2014 and a team of volunteers also built an island adjacent to the center where some of the more advanced and boisterous juveniles will go from forest school for the next stage of their rehabilitation process. Is that Skull Island? No, that's where King Kong lives. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's your pop culture. That's, that's ape, not orangutan. That, 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 that's the pop culture quote for the day. <laughs> um there's a thing called the human orangutan conflict and orangutans and humans naturally avoid each other as much as possible. However, the rapid rate of deforestation is pushing orangutans closer to human habitation every day, every day as they serve every a day. day, every day, every day, every day, <laughs> every day, 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 I have the, I have the, I have the, the... And I do all the redneck Redneckization. Redneckization. I'm always the one out there pronouncing all the crazy names, uh, drug names, uh, city names in different countries. I always, I get to do the, the, uh, the fluffs. The other week, Jim says to me the other day, the fluffs, he says to me, I said, oh, we should do a... a, a a bloopers reel. And he said, well, we just played this show because I've made that many mistakes in the show. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, <laughs> having gone down that path, I'm going to say it one more time. The rapid rate of deforestation is pushing orangutans closer to the human habitation every day as they search for food. And this has caused an increase in the number of calls uh, that their team receives every day and sometimes has tragic consequences. Orangutans are big, powerful animals and sadly, largely out of ignorance and fear. People use brute force to subdue them. And the International Animal Rescue is committed to implementing an extensive education program to teach people not to fear these endangered primates, but to respect their strength and their struggle to survive. So here are some facts about uh, this deforestation. You wonder why it's happening. Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's so that uh, they can uh, produce palm oil. And uh, I pulled off these facts from One Green Planet. And uh, palm oil is high in saturated fat. Uh, one tablespoon of palm oil contain, contains 55% of your daily recommendation of saturated fat. Um, up to 300 football fields of forest are cleared every hour to make room for palm plantations. In the past 10 years, the orangutan population has decreased by 50% as a result of habitat loss from forest clearing from pl palm plantations. There are only 6,300 Sumatran orangutans left. It is estimated that 1,000 orangutans are killed a year. So you're looking at six years and they're gone. Um, a major factor in these deaths being forest clearing for palm production. In 2006, at least 1,500 were clubbed to death by palm workers. This is, this is why we don't want palm oil in our lives. Um, wow, there's rednecks all over the world. Uh, yeah, well just, just cool people, very cool people. Um, to profit. Uh, clearing one hectare, which is about two square acres of peat forest, can release 6,000 tons of carbon dioxide. Indonesia has currently cleared around 6 million hectares of tropical peat forest, and they have plans to expand by 4 million more hectares by 2015. So you know now, now we're beyond that. In Indonesia, the palm oil industry is responsible for about 5,000 land and human rights conflicts. So this is this is an animal thing. This is a, uh, a human thing. This is a um, uh, a planetary thing um, for the Earth. It, it concern it, it, there are a lot a lot of concerns, and they are really impacting all those things in a really, really, really bad way. 
Uh, nearly 45 million people live in the forests of Indonesia. And in 2011, uh, Wilmar, one of the world's largest palm oil producers, bulldozers ransacked an entire village, destroying 40 homes to clear 40,000 hectares of land for a palm plantation. Only 35% of palm growers that are members of the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil are actually certified by the RSPO, meaning that other 65% pay to be members but have taken no action to adhere to the guidelines in their growing practices. Palm oil ranks among the U.S. Departments of Labor's top four worst industries for forced and child labor. In 2013, uh, there was an article by Benjamin Skinner, and it illustrates the deep seeds of human rights abuses prevalent in the palm industry. And RSPO standards allow growers to plant w on peatlands and to clear secondary forests. Tropical peatlands store up to 10 times more carbon than mineral soil, meaning draining and planting on peatlands is up to 10 times more detrimental to the environment. Palm oil development allows easy access for poachers into exposed habitats that have been cleared for plantations. As a result, it is estimated that the Sumatran tiger population will be extinct in less than three years. This is outrageous if nothing is done to protect their habitat or combat poachers. And so let me tell you about palm oil. It, it's not something that we see on the shelves. It's not something you go, oh, can you get me some palm oil? Because you Isn't it in the in the fast food processing industry? Yeah, it's like it's like the hydrogenated oils. Yeah, it's um, it, palm oil is found in absolutely everything from food and household products uh, to makeup and other cosmetics. And today, palm oil is also being widely considered as being an alternative to the natural fossil fuels that are rapidly running out, primarily being used as a form of biofuel in the transport industry. So you'll find palm oil in consumer retail food and snack manufacturers, personal care and cosmetics, um, mainly palm kernel oil. So uh, and there's an easy way you can check for this, and Jim's going to tell you in a second. Biofuel and energy, animal feed, palm kernel expeller, pharmaceuticals. Uh, it's used uh, industri in an industrial way, and it's in the food service service industry. I am going to assume, Jim, that... Your favorite app. Which one is that? Your the one from the Beagle Freedom Project. Yes. Do you want to tell everybody what that one is? Um, it tells you like when you go shopping. The name of it. Mm, I forget because it's not on my phone anymore. Cruelty Cutter. Cruelty Cutter. Yeah. You could scan barcodes. Yeah. And get instantaneous background on food and cleaning products and it'll tell basically you anything it'll, it'll tell you if they have research on it and they know about it you'll get a warning if it's cruelty free or not or not yeah and so um, that database is growing so i'm i am i'm convinced that um, that's the easiest way for you to find out whether you've got palm oil in certain things certain food certain uh, products um it's actually a very good app it's uh it's cheap how much is it to download it, Jim? Like a dollar, two dollars? No, it might have been like ten bucks. I think. Nah, it wasn't that much. But anyway, even if it was, is it coconut oil considered a palm oil? oil? Uh, I'm I not sure. It to might be. I'm not sure to be honest with you. Um, you can research that for us. Um, it's worth it's worth getting the app. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. But w the component I like the most about the app is one, it educates you. Two you can share your findings. So whether it's cruelty-free or not, you can actually say, hey, look, this is a great product. It's cruelty-free. Share it on your social media. It's so easy from the app. But also at the same time, you can say, this is not cruelty-free, which anyone else reading that through social media, it may be an eye-opener for them and go, oh my gosh, I've been using that. I don't need to use that. I'll find an alternative. And I really, really think that's a great app. And as I said, the database just keeps growing and growing and growing. And we'll find out um, how much that app is. So that's why we need to try and say, you know, no to palm oil by finding out how, how, it's, how we consume it on a daily basis because it's affecting animals, it's affecting human beings, it's affecting the, the, the earth. And um, gosh, greed. I mean, it's, it's terrible. That's really, really terrible. And uh, if you see some of these pictures... Uh, of of these animals that have been pushed out of the environment. It's, it's tragic. It's absolutely tragic. So thank you to the um, uh, organization 
uh, International Animal Rescue, that they're actually there to help them and save them. But we hope we get to a point where the demand is not there because people become more aware of it and hopefully they won't have to rescue as many. And that website, again, is internationalanimalrescue.org. Well, Jim, let's take another quick break because when we come back, we're talking about Thanksgiving since it's next week. So stay right there. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Pet Scene Magazine is dedicated to Las Vegas pets and the people who love them. It's a source of news and information for pet lovers, as well as offering valuable coupons and specials on pet products and services. Find them online at www.lvpetscene.com or look for them on Facebook. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking about Thanksgiving. Uh, just before the break, we did talk about um, palm oil, why we need to say no to palm oil. And if you get the chance, hop on over to the App Store. I think it's also on Google Play as well. And download the Cruelty Cutter app. And that's part of the Beagle Freedom Project. And you'll be able to scan. It's very good. Scan. Find out what you're using and see if it is uh, cruelty-free or not. They're very small things you can do. I think it's free now. Oh, is it? That'll be even better. It's going free on my Google search. Amazing. Amazing. Just download it. It's a, it's it's those small changes that make big changes in the end. You know, if you get uh, 10,000 people that decide, mm, I'm not going to have that product because it's got palm oil in it, you can have this domino effect and it can get bigger. They call, I think they call it the, the butterfly effect, don't they? Like one little flutter of the wings and how it can travel across the world and affect Other weather. Other little things. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess that's one way of putting it. <laughs> so, so there you go. That's another good one. Thanksgiving. So we talked about Thanksgiving earlier, and I am a dual citizen. Don't, don't listen to what Jim says. I'm an official dual citizen. I am British and American. That's that. <laughs> tell the story about last year. No, I can't. Tell, tell them the story. <sighs> no, it takes too long. You have 20 minutes. Well, I'll put it this way. The American consulate in England uh, didn't communicate well with the one here in the States. And I had an issue coming back from England into the States. Even though dual citizen, I was still only traveling on one passport. That's all I had was my British passport. And if you come back into the country as an American, you must have an American passport. Even though the consulate said it was okay for me to travel that day, I ended up being detained. <laughs> it was horrible. Like Michael Savage. I hadn't done anything wrong Banned at all. But, like, but the weird thing is when I spoke to the consulate in the airport, because there was an issue with me doing everything online, you know, you have to do like a pre pre-check thing online anyway with the airlines and they had an issue with it so they still don't worry that day come in to, we'll check you in blah 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 then there was they couldn't do it and then um the consulate came over and just said you know yes i can see you're a dual citizen no problem well you can travel today i'll give you permission i'm like thank you and i had a horrible feeling for that 10 11 hour flight coming back i just had this horrible feeling and i, I landed and you know now you scan your fingerprint which i'm in there trust me i'm in i'm in the database been in there for over 20 years, re-fingerprinted many times. And, yep, checked out, no problem. But for some reason on the screen, they couldn't select something else because they didn't have an American passport on me. So, because I wasn't coming in as a Brit. <sighs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's one for my, uh, my biography, isn't it? My autobiography. You should have had video of it. No, I was very stressed out. It's horrible. I just had that gut instinct. Something's not right. Sure, and I'm just assuming he just didn't put it in the computer or whatever it was. Uh, it was not there. Okay, so we digress, but we're going to talk a little bit about traveling anyway. So I guess it's related. But Thanksgiving is next week, and uh, 
it's uh, can be lots and lots of fun for the for the humans, but not so fun for your pets because it can be quite stressful. Um, I know it would be stressful for my dogs. That's why I don't have dinners at my house. Uh, they're not great when people come over. It takes a long time for them to settle down, and then I'd be totally paranoid about someone feeding them something they shouldn't, someone leaving a drink around, someone opening the front door. You know, if someone knocked on the door, it's all those things. So um, for us, it's easy for us to do the day trip or for us to visit somebody else. <laughs> it's solved. So, you know, if, if, you, if you're not doing it, you're doing anything like that, you just go to a friend's house. But if you are holding Thanksgiving at your house or you're traveling to someone's house and you are bringing your pet with you, there are some considerations you have to make. That's a new one. That's a new That's a new blooper, that one. I don't even know what that word was. I know. <laughs> <laughs> to go back and take that one out. I will definitely do a bloopers reel at the end of the year because people can have a good old laugh. Um, you don't have to be perfect, you know. Oh, um, but you say you are. I, no, I like to try and do things You say you're well. perfect in every way. <laughs> I know you've said that many times. When? Many times over the years. Okay. Are you not going to confirm that? No, I'm just that's saying that's what you claim. Those that's are your, rude. Those are your claims. I cannot confirm nor deny your you claims. You should confirm it. Why? Because I'll be in trouble after the show? No, you should confirm that I'm perfect in every way. Yes, you say that you are perfect in every way, and I confirm that <laughs> Do you, you believe say, it? I confirm that you say that. Do you that. believe it? <laughs> Do you believe it? <laughs> you can't put me on the spot like you, that. Because you, uh, you don't come off not be looking so nice if you don't oh, believe yes, it. Oh, yes, you're so perfect. Thank you. You're so perfect. <laughs> It makes me want to throw up sometimes. <laughs> oh, she's perfect again. I better throw up. Oh, my oh God. she's perfect again. <laughs> I rec- red recognize that I'm not. I like to do things very well. I do. I have standards, Jim. I have standards. Ooh, my co-hosts are jiggling around a little bit. They're moving around the studio. They they have their I've got all these beds in here. Mister Twix is just in a corner by the trash can. <laughs> like what? <laughs> he's not even on the bed, but he looks comfy. He's all cuddled up. Uh, Thanksgiving. Here we go. Thanksgiving. There are yummy foods for us, but they're not going to be so good for your pet. Now, there is this big movement right now where human food is it's just food. I don't know why we call it human food. There are food is fresh food, live food is good for your pets, but you have to know which foods are good for your pets. And uh, here are the dangerous ones. Uh, Raisins, grapes and onions. If you've got chocolate hanging around, um, those kind of things are are dangerous to your pets. Um, Turkey bones, dangerous to your pets. Fatty skin, not great. It can cause pancreatitis. So th- there's a lot of, of foods you want to avoid, and, and some of those you're going to have at Thanksgiving. So it's important that you actually um, make sure your pets are safe from the kitchen and they, they can't surf the countertops and they can't surf the tables for food because you're not going to be able to, if you're hosting the dinner, you're not going to be able to keep your eyeballs on everything. I mean, if you can actually have a family member you say, you know what, you're in charge of the pets. You make sure that they, that they uh, don't come in the kitchen, that they don't jump on the table, they don't counter surf. Really, really important that you do that. And then you can actually get on with whatever you're doing if you're the one that likes to cook. Um, and so that's one of the things you want to do. Secure your kitchen. An easy way is get the baby gate. I got the table surfer here right now. Oh, I know. We, we, have a, we, we never leave any food out, thank goodness, because Mr. Twix likes to be on top of the tables anyway. So... Uh, and, and that's never been a, a worry for us. But uh, a baby gate's really easy. Uh, stick a baby gate up or, or uh, you may have a pet gate. Put that up at your kitchen. That way your pets are not coming in near the hot oven. They're not going to try and jump up on the countertops. Uh, they're not going to try and uh, tip your, your r- rubbish bin over to get out whatever's in there. And that's a very, very easy way. Yeah, we know somebody that does that. Yeah, we never. Had, none of our dogs ever tried to get in the trash. Ever. But a certain little mister did a few months ago. And since then, we went and bought a very expensive, ridiculously priced, locking trash can. Best thing ever. So he has tried to drag it over before, but he can't get in it. He can knock it over now, but he cannot get in that thing. Um, and it's called Simple Human. Uh, we picked it up from Lowe's if you're interested in They're a locking approved trash can. approved by 
what the pet manufacturers association yeah they are approved for that and uh, trust me they do work they really do work and uh, so that's another thing secure your trash cans um what you can do to get rid of temptation is like when i did the made their bone broth for them and i knew i was going to be left with a lot of uh, bones and some fatty skin we threw we threw it out in the outside trash can we didn't put it in the kitchen one because that smell is all too tempting to them now there are some foods your pets can have and uh, we've got friends right now with the Churchill Foundation who uh, actually prepare a Thanksgiving meal for your pets or you can pay for one for a shelter pet which is a wonderful program and some of the foods they can eat are sweet potatoes pumpkin they can have turkey um, they can have um, they can have some carrots. Uh, they they can have some apples, and they can also have some cranberries. Believe it or not, can they have some pens. Pens. Apples. Oh, apple pen. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that guy. I love it. <laughs> There's another pop culture reference. Apple pen song. Pen pan apple apple pen. If you haven't seen it, I'll share it on Facebook for you. Um, so there are some things that they um, can eat. Of course, they cannot eat cooked bones. They never should have cooked bones, ever, ever, ever. They can have some turkey, but they need to avoid the skin and any and anything else that's fatty because it can cause this pancreatitis. So what you may want to do is prepare um, food for them that has no seasonings on, no fat or anything like that, and have their own little Thanksgiving meal. But don't go crazy. They don't need a whole plate full of it. And uh, you, you, you don't want to try and do something that your pets have never done before. And if you are going to start bringing your pets onto human food, real food, live food, maybe Thanksgiving's not the time to do it. Because <laughs> you know what could happen. You could have some tummy shames, couldn't you, Jim? That's true. They could have some tummy shames. But, uh, then, the, then the husband has to go clean it up in the house. So. <laughs> yeah, and who wants to do that, you know? Now, another thing to consider is having, having a plan for when visitors come. And uh, my biggest concern would be uh, someone opening the front door that doesn't live at my house because someone knocked on it and another guest arrived and, th and then my pet's running out. So assign someone to that duty. You know, when your guests come in, say, hey, don't answer the door if anyone knocks. My husband, my girlfriend, my daughter, whatever, is going to answer the door every single time. And that way, it's going to be safer. They can clip um, the leash on the dog so they don't take off out of the front door. Now, like I said, my pets are not great when people come over, so, and it takes a long time for them to settle down and trust you. But what you may want to do is have some nice treats available that your guests can actually give to your pet to create some kind of a bond and a trust there uh, to make that process a little bit easier. Uh, we talked about the kitchen safety, put up that baby gate, keep them away from, from food, keep them away from trash, keep them away from the heat of the oven. And tell your guest, do not feed my pets anything now sometimes i know people go oh can't say that to grandma whoever you know you can't say that to her. you know what you can do you can just say hey they're on a special diet right now and i don't want to cause any issues with them with their, their stomachs their little bellies so can you not can you not feed them any food another thing is drinks alcoholic drinks anything that you can drink Ask your guests not to place them on the floor, which a lot of people do, by the side of the sofa, whatever. Um, so you've got to be very careful of that as well. And what else? I say we've talked about the treats that make it a little bit easier when guests come over um, to make them love you a little bit more. <laughs> You'd have to give my dogs a whole steak for them to even warm up to you in five minutes <laughs> before they would relax. Um, and another thing too, for your pets, you know, they love to get into, into stuff especially stuff that's not theirs. And so make sure your guests have a place to place their, their coats, their purses, uh, those kind of things. Keep them out of the way. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Can you think of any more tips there, Jim? I mean, really, if you've got a pet that stresses well, out. Well, it's the social thing about it, too, with family in and out of the house. Yeah, it's, it's too you know, Open doors, opening doors and garage doors and yeah. back doors and backyard fences. And, and people don't think like you do. You know, if they're your pets and you're responsible for them. So don't expect other people to feel the same way about your pets that you do or have as, as much consideration for them. And here's the thing. If you've got pets, like I say, mine, eh, not so bothered about people coming over. You know what? Give them their own little room. Put the TV on the radio. You can get them some raw bones, some raw chew bones. 
and some toys. And I think that's probably a better solution that's going to be safe. They're going to be quieter and they won't be stressed out because it is stressful, you know, with uh, with uh, pets and Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, Halloween, all those things. Um, July the 4th is another one. That's a big one. So so there, there are your Thanksgiving kind of food tips on the day and some safety tips. But what if you're traveling? Most people are hopping in their cars, taking their pets with them. And so uh, I've got a little checklist here for you, which I think would um, would aid you in preparing for travel. Now, if you're traveling by plane, you can have some extra steps to do and the airlines will give you a list. It changes from airlines to airlines. Be aware of that. And so uh, you're going to have a pre-travel checklist that uh, make you've got to make sure you've got your, your health certificates for your pets. Um, in some cases, you'll need a pet passport, those kind of things. And then everything else from here down applies to any time that you travel. Um, you need to, if you're going to be in vehicles, how are you going to transport your pets? Um, do you have um, appropriate carriers, pet carriers, um, harnesses? And one place you can go to find out you need a crash test approved harness or, or crate is go to to uh, pet, uh, Center for Pet Safety. Would you find me the website for that, Jim? Center for Pet Safety. They do the independent crash tests and they'll tell you what is a safe product for you to place your pets in when you travel. So uh, go the extra step. There's not a lot of truth in advertising with pet products. And I've seen pet products say that they're crash test approved and they are not. So center for pet org. There you go. So you can just hop, hop over there, find out the best the best products for you and your pets. Um they also because you're gonna restrain them, it obviously makes them safer. Um it stops them being a distraction to you, hopping around in the car and you'll be able to see them and that's important. So um and that's when you're traveling in the car. Of course, ID tags are really important anytime that you go out with your pets walking or traveling and um that's i mean that's just a must and the chip you know it, it, you're going to increase your chances of finding your pet if you lose them if they're chipped and they and they're tagged and they're up to date so hey, make i got a news story did you see this yesterday it looks like it just came out on twitter yesterday what is that about New Jersey is on its way to becoming the first state in the country to ban vets from declawing the cats. Yeah, let me finish this list and then we'll talk about uh, that. I'm sorry, it just no, came no, no. Up, I know so it's a good story. Just, I just saw it pop up it's, on my. It's finally good news. Yeah, I'm almost done with this list, and then let's talk about that because that's really important. That's a good step. That's a really good step. Um, so IDs, chips, um, and then your packing essentials. You're going to need food, water, bowls, toys, blankets, bed, your medication for your pets. Make sure you've got plenty of it. Uh, a small first aid kit, because you never know what can happen. And make sure you book into pet-friendly accommodations so that you don't have any issues when you arrive. Uh, medical records, if necessary. Your vet's information. And if you, wherever you're traveling to, look for a local vet as well, because you just never know where you may need to get to a vet, a physical vet. Um, do lots of stops on the way. Uh, give your pets the, a chance to stretch their legs. Have a little bite to eat, but make sure that they eat light because some get very sick when traveling and lots and lots of hydration. And of course, you're going to take more steps. Your trips are going to take longer. So, uh, you know, factor that into the list as well. And always supervise your, your pets. Never leave them in the car ever. Not for not when it's hot, not when it's cold, not by themselves because the theft is another big thing. And they do get scared. They just get scared when you leave them in a car. I, I just this week. I was at the grocery store and I could hear uh, two dogs barking really distressed and I found them in the car. And uh, yeah, the weather's dropped and it's cool now, but it's besides the point. This is about the welfare of animals. So I called the store and I said, please, please make an announcement, get this owner to come out. Uh, this person's dogs are very distressed, very distressed. And I said, you know, don't say to me, oh, well, it's not hot because it's not just about being hot or cold. It's about leaving them and uh, how upset they were. Um, so never leave them alone. Make sure that they're always with you. And, of course, make them as comfortable as you possibly can. Because uh, we all like to travel in style, don't we, <laughs> these days? You're probably going to pack more for your pets than you do for yourself, in all honesty. But it's worth it. So there we go. There are my Thanksgiving tips. There's quite a few there for traveling and when you're actually uh, having Thanksgiving at your own home. 
All right, Jim. So let's talk about this uh, this ban. Where is it again? Well, it's in New Jersey, and it looks like a bill cleared the Assembly Committee on Monday mm. uh, that would set fines and jail time for violations <gasps> for vets. I mean, the fines are small, but they're associated with some jail time. Right. It's good. Uh, you know, and then it goes into the... It's good. Imagine having your own toes chopped off, yeah, essentially. I mean, that's a bit, little bit dramatic, but that's really what it is. And see how well you would function without fingers and toes. And imagine the pain and sensitivity that you would have beyond that as well for life. And that's essentially what happens when you declaw a cat. And it just seems so barbaric. I'm often shocked that veterinarians still do it. And most people do it because they don't want to ruin their furniture. Well, you know what? Don't get a cat. There was an assemblyman, Parker Space, oh dear. who voted against the bill <laughs> based on his family's experience with their feline, okay. whose claws inflicted $600 worth of damage to their home. You see, there you go. This is a person that doesn't need a cat. If you can't put a cat above a sofa, you and know. He said it was either getting declawed or going back to the shelter. Well, what a, what a lovely person he is. <laughs> A, you see, I don't a think New Jersey assemblyman. You see, and this is someone that also this is this is what worries me. This is those kind of people that worry me. They worry me that they they get to make these decisions. Thankfully, he was the only one that went against it. But I don't see any reason why you would just go against it. Why would you? Well, maybe he just doesn't value animals as much as the rest of us, and and it, that's what's scary. About those kind of people, ma- you know, making those kind of decisions too. Um, yeah, if you if you put your furniture above your cat, mm, no, find your cat a loving home, someone who doesn't care about that. Uh, th- there are certain things you can do. Th- you know, there are uh, it, a lot of it is to encourage and train your cats to enjoy cat trees and you know scratch posts and those kind of things, um, and giving them you know an environment where they can thrive. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. I'm glad it passed. I'm so glad it passed. Uh, it's just a terrible, terrible, terrible thing to do to an animal. It's mutilation. It's like cropping ears, cropping tails. It's all mutilation. And that, that we can't accept that. I think we have to start really frowning on stuff. I, I want, I, I want um, an emoji, you know, f- on Facebook, you know, so instead of like the thumbs up and the heart and then the an angry face, how about like fr- like a big frown? Uh, you, you need to frown on it and just say we fr- people frown on that. Don't do that anymore. Um, last couple of things I've got for the day. It's uh, gosh, I put a lot into the show today. Is um, I am airing Pet Fooled, which is a documentary blowing the lid off the commercial pet food industry. And if you're not sure how your food's made for your pets and what's in it, you definitely need to come and see this movie. I'm airing it in Las Vegas at Town Square Cinemas on December fourteenth. Now. I have to reserve. I have to get. I have to get another seventy people or sixty nine. I think it is now to reserve their ticket. So you reserve the ticket. We have to hit a certain number. So I've got another sixty nine to go, and you. And once we hit that, and it's called tipping the event. Once we tip the event, we go over that number. Then it can go ahead. Now, if you're someone that's already reserved, don't worry, you'll not get charged if it doesn't go ahead. But I want this to go ahead. I'm going to share this on Facebook. I'd love for you to share that and tag your friends also. It's uh, a big movement. It's important. Pet owners need to know what's going on in this industry. And uh, it's going to be a real eye-opener. And I think it's going to upset a lot of people. But it will spur them into action to do better for their pets when it comes to nutrition. And not be fooled by advertising. Advertising is slick and cool and the whole psychology behind it. And we all fall for it in one way or another, depending on, on uh, what the product is. So that's important. That's Pet Fool December 14th here in Las Vegas. I'm going to share that on my Facebook page. It's been on there all, a couple of times, but we'll put it up once again. And uh, our citywide uh, drive, pet donation drive, is still going on till December 16th. And that's with Rocking for Rescues. So you can go to uh, the page, Rocking for Rescues, and you'll see the locations listed. I think we're currently at 30 locations or 30 boxes that are out in the city. And what we ask people to do is drop off donations. And it can be money. It can be um, gift cards to PetSmart Petco. It can be dog beds, food, pet bowls. 
uh, collars, leashes, you name it, we will take it. And then what we're going to do is distribute it amongst the rescues in Las Vegas and help them out during this holiday season where donations kind of dry up because we're all spending money on gifts. So that's my last thing, I think, for the for the show today, Jim. That uh, covered a lot there. You did pretty good. Oh, thank you very much, I mean, Jim. you did well. I did very well, yes. It's not good, by the way. I, you do well. You don't do good. You do well. <laughs> well, you do good things. You do good things. Well. But you don't, but you don't good. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you can do good things well, but you don't do good. You do well. There we go. There's a, <laughs> a little lesson there. Uh, it's been fantastic having you uh, listening to the show today. I thought you were going to say it was fantastic having me. It is fantastic having you, Jim, and my three little co-hosts, Galaxy, Thornton, and Mr. Twix. Um, what a great season. Share the um, the Thanksgiving tips with your friends and family. Share this show with your family. It makes it easy. Uh, we appreciate you listening in. And um, we're going to have a great show next week, a really great show next week, particularly for those people who are in the pet industry who sell stuff. As for instance, we're talking about marketing and we have a great guest coming on and uh, follow our Facebook page for the update on that particular guest. Uh, thank you, Jim. He's yawning. Bless I'm him. welcome. Thank You're welcome. And uh, today you've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, where it's all about pets, people, and pop culture. I'm your host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Always kiss your pets good morning and good night. I'll see you next time. You've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. <laughs>